welcome to a new weekly reading vlog. I am currently on vacation. We finally made it in after our flight got delayed a couple times and then we sat on the plane for like a good two hours before we could take off because the weather was weathering. Um, it was it was an adventure getting out here but we are here. It is Thursday and we're just getting settled in. I just had breakfast. I did read a ton while I was on the plane. I finished two books? Three books. I finished three books. So we'll talk about those and then I'll show you the books that I brought with me. If you saw last week's vlog, you know that I decided the way to catch up uh, for my 30 books in 30 days is to read Audible original romances because they're quick and easy to get through. So I did do that. But in last week's vlog, I did start The Little Mermaid Against the Tide by JL. And I finished that, I think like before I even got on the plane, I finished that. I ended up giving it three stars. It was absolutely fine. This is kind of a mystery because Ariel is about to be named the protector of her particular sea. But during the ceremony, one of her sisters gets kidnapped. And so it is now a mystery trying to figure out what happened to her sister who took her. It was fine. I liked it. There was a, a big emphasis on like family and Ariel because her sisters have been kind of estranged for a while. Ariel's 15 in this book. Like her sisters, she got her sisters back together and it was, it was sweet. It was nice, but it wasn't like I wasn't in love with it. But it wasn't bad so i gave it three stars then on the plane because i cannot sleep on planes at all um i read two books so i started with son of a beach by mia sosa um never read anything by this author before but i saw this it was a quick one this is about i honestly don't even remember oh naomi <laughs> naomi and david possibly donovan Donovan. Okay, so Na Naomi and Donovan, they work together. They work for this men's magazine and they kind of have this like hate relationship, like this very fraught. They're kind of like rivals. It's kind of like this hate to love situation. So they end up both going to the Bahamas to do this photo shoot for the magazine and love ensues, of course. And it was cute. It was fine. <laughs> Nothing particularly stood out to me with this one, but I gave it three stars. It was fine. And then after that, I read What the Hex by Alexis Daria. So like, I think this was like last year, I did an Audible TBR video, and I don't think I ever read any of those books in that TBR video, but this was one of them. This is following Catalina, and she is from a family of, of brujas. They live on this like secret island off of the coast of Miami called Isla Bruja. Everyone there uh, is magical, they're witches. And she goes, she hasn't been, she's been living in New York for the past few years. She hasn't been back to her island in a while. She hasn't even been using magic in a while. But as soon as she gets to her house, she notices that everyone is under a spell. And the groom, because it's her sister's wedding, the groom is like possessed by a demon. <laughs> and the only ones who are not affected by the spell are her, of course, and Diego, who is kind of, was kind of like her childhood rival. They were always trying to one-up each other in school and in life, but they now have to work together to exercise this demon and to break the spell that's been cast on everyone before the wedding ceremony and they very quickly fall into a romance and it was sweet i liked all the magical aspects to this one i liked the way the magic worked in here i would love to see like a full-length novel with this premise not necessarily the premise but just like the the as the magical aspect and this this island that is just full of witches i just love the whole idea of that the romance itself was just fine um and so <laughs> Like some of the lines, okay, I took notes because I was like, oh my God, this is, this is too much. The, okay, so one of them, I'm gonna ride that broomstick all night. That's, that's what she said to him. And then he goes, I'm gonna stir your cauldron until it bubbles over. I was just, I was giggling, <laughs> just cackling in the plane when the, when I heard those lines. And there, there were more, there were so many more. But anyway, I finished it, it was fine gave it three stars and then i started but have not finished witchy whiskers by danielle garrett this is i don't know if this is like a romance i think it's supposed to be a romance but it's another witchy one and our main character 
is a witch, of course, and it's like set in this magical town that has really cozy vibes. And she owns a magic shop, a magic candle shop called Wicked Wicks, which is such a clever name. Oh my goodness. Her candles like evoke or create illusions, which is really cool, or they create memories or dreams or stuff like that, which is super, super cool. Just started that one, so I don't really have many thoughts on it yet, but so far so good. I'm, I'm liking the atmosphere and the vibe. So today is the 29th of June. We only have today and tomorrow to finish this challenge, and I have read 26 books? 26, just counted them. Okay, so 26 books, so four more books to go. I think I can do it, you guys. I really think I do. I didn't, I didn't think it would happen, but I think it might happen. So yay. Let me show you the books that I brought with me on vacation. I wanted just like fun, easy things to read. I wanted some romance, maybe some mystery, um, just quick, fun things. So I brought with me Corpse Pose by Diana Killian, which is a cute little cozy mystery that I thought would be fun. I also brought uh, Le Petit Mort by Olivia Blake, which again is a nice short one and I have no idea what it's about, but it's Olivia Blake, so I'm sure it'll be amazing. I brought uh, My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey, which is a romantic suspense, which I thought would be good for summer vacation. And then I also brought Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jessica Cusitanto because I have not read this yet. One of my most anticipated reads and it's another cozy mystery. And judging from other books that I've read by Jessica Cusitanto, it's probably gonna be absolutely hilarious, which I thought would be fun. And then this one, I actually picked this up the day before we left because I wanted specifically like a romance to read by the pool. That was my vision. So I picked up the comeback by Lily Chu. I went to Target and they didn't have a lot of options, but I saw this. It was blurbed by Talia Hibbert. I haven't read anything by Lily Chu. At least I don't think so. And this looked like it might be a good one. Talia Hibbert says that it is hilarious and relatable. And I also brought You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Bayron because this just feels like ultimate summer vacation book reading to me. <laughs> and then of course I brought I Await the Devil's Coming, which is one that I'm still reading because I started this, oh my god, when did I start this? Like a week ago almost? And have not finished it yet. I am 56 pages in. I read a tiny bit on the plane, but once it started getting dark I didn't want to be the asshole that turned on the overhead light, you know what I mean? So I just put it down and listened to audiobooks instead. Those are the books I brought with me. That is my current reading update. We'll see what I decide to pick up next, but I will definitely update you once I finish something. <laughs> It has been a couple of days since I updated you. Um, it is currently Monday, the 3rd of July. So June is officially over. As far as my 30 book and 30 day challenge, I didn't complete it. I read a total of 26 books. And at first I was really upset <laughs> for not completing it. But honestly, 26 books is a lot. I managed to read more than I have all year and I had a good time doing it, but yes, challenge failed unfortunately the last day of the month friday was actually my daughter's birthday she turned seven so we went to knott's berry farm which is this um theme park here in california and it she had an amazing day roller coasters just having a fun time so that's what we did friday and then we came home and we did cake um she had a beautiful rainbow cake rainbow unicorn cake and then yesterday was the wedding, which I don't even know if I mentioned that we came out here partially for a wedding. Yesterday was the wedding, it was great. I danced, even though I wore six inch heels that were not meant for dancing, but I did dance. And as far as reading, I finished Witchy Whiskers, which I can't remember the author now, but I'll put a picture up. And I actually really enjoyed it. I think that this is probably a series I will continue. I didn't realize though that it's it's not romance, by the way. It's actually a cozy mystery of sorts, I guess, with some magic. Our main character owns this, I think I did tell you about it. Our main character owns this 
candle shop called um, Wicked Wicks still love the name a man comes into her shop buys a candle from her then like the next day gets accused of murdering his brother and so the two of them end up kind of working together to fit because he claims it wasn't him to figure out who killed his brother and what's going on so there's that mystery aspect to it but it's also we have kind of this romance love triangle going on between her and the guy and her ex-husband who is now back in town. I thought it was fine. I gave it three stars. Well, a little more than fine. I actually enjoyed my time reading it. And like I said, we'll continue on with the series probably. But it was a good time. I really like the atmosphere. It takes place in this, this fictional town that is all magical. There's like a magical world and a non-magical world, but everybody knows about each other's. The thing that made it the best though was the talking cat. She is incredibly sassy and snarky and sarcastic and I love her and she made the book for me honestly it was her magical immortal talking cat that can do her own magic and is hilarious so loved that aspect to it three stars and now I have started the comeback by Lily Chu I <laughs> brought you saw all the books I brought with me I showed you I brought like seven books and it's Tuesday no it's Monday what it's Monday and I haven't finished anything yet besides witchy whiskers. I've had much less time to read than I thought I would, which makes sense. Like I'm on vacation, I'm having fun, spending time with friends and family and not thinking about reading as much as I usually do. That's fine, I'm not mad at it, but I am quite far into the comeback. I am right there, if you can see. So well over halfway through and I'm really enjoying this. Although this wasn't exactly what I imagined it would be. So I I picked this up at Target the day before we left because I was like, I want to read a romance while I'm out there. I want something spicy and fun. And this is fun, yes, but not spicy at all. Like there was one scene with the love interest that was fade to black, which I was very upset about. So not exactly what I thought I was getting, but still really enjoying it because because Ari, our main character, is this lawyer who is dead set on her career. Like she lives for work and she is so obsessed with her job. She's constantly working and she's really uptight and she has this like solid plan for how she wants her life to go. And anything that deviates from that plan is not included in her life. But everything changes when a strange man shows up on her couch who turns out to be her roommate's cousin visiting from sh from Seoul. Her roommate kind of forgot to tell her it was coming. At first she's like really standoffish with him but there is an attraction between the two of them and they get to know each other and they have a cute little budding romance until she finds out that he's kind of been lying to her because he is actually a singer in one of the most famous K-pop bands ever. Okay, once she finds that out, all shit hits the fan. He really wants to do a long distance thing and make it work, but she's like, we live in two separate worlds, like this could never work. And so that's kind of what this is about. But this is also about her kind of repairing her relationship with herself and with her sister, who she's kind of been estranged with for a while. There's a lot of like, I, I feel like, I hate to use the term, but I feel like this is more like women's fiction as opposed to romance. Yes, the romance in here is absolutely swoon-worthy. It really is. I love the two of them together, and I really love the main love interest, Jihoon. But I just feel like this story is more about her and coming to terms with what she wants in life and living more authentically, which is really hard for her and feelings are really hard for her. And I'm just really excited to see her kind of open up. And she has been opening up a bit more when she's with Jihoon, but she still has a long way to go. And I am very much invested in her life at this point and what's gonna happen with that, more so than I am in the romance, although I am really invested in the romance as well because it is so incredibly cute. So that's where I am with this, hoping for some more romance, hoping for a little more spice honestly, because that's what I wanted. Um, but I'm, I'm having a really good time with this. I think that this is gonna be really good and I'm excited to finish it, but honestly, this might be the only book that I read while I'm here. Hello, friends. As you can see, I am back home. I thought that I was gonna end up vlogging a lot more while I was on vacation, but I, that just didn't happen. Honestly, I, we haven't taken a vacation in so many years. So I was just enjoying my time, relaxing, being away from home, spending time with friends, the wedding. We had a great time. And I did not read 
nearly as much as I thought it would, which is fine. Today is Friday the 7th of July. I don't know how much footage I have for this vlog, probably not a lot. I was gonna say I'll probably just wrap it up here, but I'll probably run it through the weekend because I don't think I have a lot of footage anyway. Anyway, last time I spoke to you, I was still reading The Comeback by Lily Chu, and I did finish this, and I actually ended up really enjoying this, more than I thought I would. I already told you what this is about, and it was so sweet. Honestly, Jihoon, I think I talked about this already, how, how like Jihoon is just a really soft, sweet boy, and I loved them together. I loved them individually, I loved them together. I thought the romance was really, really sweet. The only thing that was lacking for me, well, maybe a couple things. So one of the things that was really lacking for me was the spice because there was zero sex in here, like none whatsoever. There, there was like one scene that was fade to black and I was very upset by that because I wanted for vacation a nice steamy romance to read and I didn't get that with this. So that was one downside. Not that it, it took anything away from the book, obviously, like not having sex is fine. Um, and then the other thing was the fact that this was so much less romance than I, I guess thought it would be. Um, this book is really about Ari just like learning to get out of her own freaking way. She is so uptight and she has such, she's always had this like vision of what her life should be because of what her father wanted for her. And I think that she just spent most of her life living her life for her parents and not for herself. She learns to let loose a bit and to find out what she really wants and to pursue that and I really loved getting to see that. I think the things that she was struggling with were things that were very relatable. I loved the extra stuff that was in here besides the romance. I really loved getting to spend time with Ari as a main character. I really liked her personality and I really liked getting to see her grow and evolve and I think that that was really the main focus in here and the romance was kind of like the B plot which is fine it's just not what I went into this wanting or expecting. That's not to say that this was bad because it was absolutely beautiful. I loved the writing. I thought there were ap there were like hilarious moments, laugh out loud moments. I had a great time overall and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. So overall a really good romance, definitely one I recommend and especially recommend if you are someone who does not like steamy scenes in your romance, then this will be a good one to pick up. I realized that this author wrote the stand, I feel like I already said this, I'm so sorry if I'm repeating myself and if I am I'll probably cut some of this out, um, but this is the author who wrote the stand in which was part of my audible TBR from last year that I never got around to reading so I will be picking up that one as well. I already have it downloaded. I am still very much in the summer vacation-y vibe and so kind of all I want to read right now is romances and just like fun cozy books for the summer. So I think I'm just gonna go with my vibe because we all know that I'm a mood reader and it's better for me to avoid reading slumps to just read what I'm in the mood for. So like all of the books that I have on my July TBR. I'm still hoping to get to them, but I mean, some of them are kind of summery, but I've got like some fantasy, some horror even, some contemporary. So I don't know if I'm gonna pick up all of them, but for right now, like I said, I'm just in the lighthearted vibe and that's what I'm gonna read. While I was, I think I started this at the airport on my way back. Um, this is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Jesse Q. Sutanto, who is the author of Dial A for Aunties, which is one of my favorite books. It's, it's more like a cozy crime than a cozy mystery. This one is very much a cozy mystery, and we're following Vera Wong, who is a little old lady, or excuse me, a lady of a certain age, who owns this tea shop that's actually called Vera Wang's in Chinatown in San Francisco. She is your typical meddling Asian auntie, and she's so funny. I have laughed. I'm only 100 pages in. I've laughed so much on almost every single page of this book so far. Oh my goodness, I love Vera so much. <laughs> like I said, completely meddling, just inserts herself into everyone's lives and situation, but in like the best way. Do you know what I mean? She owns this tea house, like I said. The tea house has seen better days. Um, it has kind of fallen into slight disrepair and she does not have a ton of customers at all, like really not making any money at the tea house anymore. And she lives um, in an apartment above the tea house. 
and one day she's going about her normal routine and a dead body is found in her tea shop. And so she calls the police, but she is not satisfied with the way the police are handling the case right away because they don't think it's murder, but she knows it's a murder. And so she is taking it upon herself to solve the crime. Like the most hilarious of situations have happened already. Like she has determined, I think four suspects and she's gathered them all together. And like, it's just, it's a riot. It's over the top. And it's so good so far. So I know I'm gonna have a blast with this. This is probably gonna be five stars and I'm gonna continue reading this. I haven't read anything for a day, which makes sense. I had a very late flight Thursday. My flight was like 1 a.m. Thursday morning and I didn't get home until like 11 a.m. Thursday morning because of the time change. I spent the whole day sleeping. I spent the whole day Thursday sleeping and then I was up all night last night. So I'm really hoping that my sleep schedule gets back to normal somehow, some way which it probably should because I've been up all day today. So I'll probably go to sleep normally tonight, crossing my fingers. Um, but yeah, I haven't read anything. Didn't read anything yesterday because I was asleep and haven't read anything today yet because I've just been, honestly, I don't even know what the hell I've been doing today. <laughs> I've just been like the, the last plane ride really kicked my ass and vacation is always tiring, you know, but I will get back into the swing of things. That was my plan today to like get back into work mode and like just regular life mode um but that, that hasn't quite happened which is okay it's fine i can give myself some time and it's the weekend now anyway i wanted to film videos today i don't know if i'm gonna get to that but anyway absolutely loving this okay so like i said my plane was a late night flight and i didn't want to be the asshole that turned on the one overhead light when everyone else was trying to sleep so i put down vera and i picked up an audiobook and I decided, because I'm still in the romance mood, to pick up another romance. And I had so many options for like what I could pick up, but I decided to go with Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood because this was an anticipated release for me and I never got around to reading it. And now Ali Hazelwood has her third novel out, um, Love Theoretically, I think is what it's called. And I am kind of interested in that. I'm worried that Allie, all of Hallie Hazelwood's books are gonna be like the same. And honestly, I am 50% of the way through Love on the Brain and it is pretty much the same thing. We have a quirky main female character who is tiny, tiny, tiny. And we have a main love interest who is this big, huge guy, okay? Huge. So that's a thing that Allie Hazelwood does and it really worked for me in The Love Hypothesis. I think it's starting to get a little bit old. Like I said, the main character is all quirky. She's of course a scientist. All of her books are about women in STEM, which is great. She's a neuroscientist, I believe. But anyway, she got this great opportunity to work on this project with NASA. So she has moved to Houston. She's actually leading this project and her co-leader on this project happens to be Levi Ward, who is someone she went to grad school with that she thinks absolutely hates her. And that's another thing. I feel like it's so obvious what's happening. Like, I think this is trying to be like a hate to love situation, but it's not really because you can tell there's something going on here with him, but she thinks he hates her because of the way he kind of interacts with her. But I'm thinking it's just an issue of like miscommunication and him being kind of shy or not knowing how to socially act around her because he's crushing on her. So it's that kind of a situation, which is kind of frustrating as well. I'm not loving it, you guys. And compared to how much I loved the love hypothesis, it's, it's really strange that I'm, not liking it as much as I'm not liking it. I'm not hating it by any means. I think it's just fine so far. Um, but yeah, I'm not loving it. And like halfway through the book and I feel like, like it's a lot of focus on the project itself and their working relationship right now, which I'm assuming is gonna turn into something different eventually but like i said 50 percent of the way through and i just feel like we're not getting anywhere does that make sense so yeah love on the brain not enjoying it as much as the love hypothesis but i definitely will give that a finish so i am in the middle of two books which is not unusual for me honestly i will probably finish both of them up this weekend at some point <laughs>
it is the next day. I don't know why I said hello like that. That was weird. I went to the library today to return my library books and then I ended up picking up more books. Um, I got a whole tote bag full. I was not planning to do this. So now we've further put, we, we've, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Let me gather my thoughts. Hold on. I've put more of a wrench into my TBR than uh, originally. My bed is a mess. I just ignore the mess in the background. Let, let's, let's do this. <laughs> There's mess here too. My life is a mess. I still haven't unpacked from vacation. Anyway, let's get into the library hall, shall we? I haven't read anything. I haven't read anything today. Didn't read anything yesterday. I fell asleep at like 9.30 last night, which is ridiculously early for me, um, but I was just passed out. I, and I slept late this morning. I think it's just like the continued jet lag and like my day and night is messed up and my, my schedule is off because time changes. Anyway, library hall. I picked up The Employees by Olga Rabin. Never heard of this before, but I saw it at the library and it just looked interesting. So I picked it up and it's like, it's told in just like these uh, logs from a crew. Okay, it says, the employees chronicles the fate of the 6,000 ship. The human and humanoid crew members complain about their daily tasks in a series of staff reports and memos. So that's what this is. It's a series of staff reports and memos. It's supposed to be funny, chilling, crackling, exhilarating, and foreboding. The employees probes into what makes us human while delivering a hilariously stringing critique of the governed, of life governed by logic and productivity. So I think that this is gonna be a fun one. Plus it's really short. It's only like a hundred pages, so why not? I picked up The Need by Helen Phillips. This is one that I remember Kayla from Books and Lala reading my battery is flashing. I gotta change that in a second. Um, and I don't remember whether she enjoyed it or not, but I remember being intrigued by it because it's supposed to be very weird. And I think it's like a commentary on motherhood. Our main character, Molly, is raising her two kids and she starts hearing things and seeing these, seeing things. That sounds interesting. Let me change my battery real quick. And we're back, okay. Then I picked up another little novella that I saw that <laughs> that sounded interesting. Um, this is called High Times in the Low Parliament. I feel like this title sounds very familiar, but I don't remember ever hearing about it. But maybe I did because it seems familiar. It's a Tor.com novella and I always love those. This is a historical fantasy romp featuring a flirtatious, a flirtatious scribe, some irritable fairies, and a precarious parliament. It, I think I did hear about this when it came out. When did this come out? Oh, it came out last year. So I'm pretty sure I must have heard about it. Don't know if I ever like put it on my radar officially or on my Goodreads TBR, but I wanted it. I then picked up, like this is the thing that could truly put my TBR into a total spin. And that's The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. Because if you will recall uh, the last book haul that I posted, I think, I picked up the second book in this series because I found it for cheap at the used bookstore, but they didn't have the first book. And I was like, I have to pick up the first book at some point. I saw it sitting there on the shelf at the library and I picked it up because why not, right? And I'm just so intrigued by this series. And it's like, it's a, it's a big one. I mean, it's not too bad, like 540 pages. So we'll see about this one if I actually pick it up. But one of my anticipated releases that I never got around to buying is Arc Conspirator by Veronica Ross, with, or Roth, not Ross, <laughs> Veronica Roth, uh, one of my favorite authors and a book that I believe is an Ariadne retelling. It is a short one, it's a novella, so easy to squeeze into the TBR. Uh, this is one that I've had my eye on for a while and never got around to picking up. This is The Future of Another Timeline by Anna Lee Newitz. It looks like there's two different timelines. Maybe there's many because it says 1992 and 2022 in the synopsis. If you can rewrite the past, you can control the future. I love time travel stories. Um, I love 
what they usually explore. You know, time travel is always something I'm looking to read about. So I picked that up. A short story or an anthology that I found, Other Terrors. This is by, or edited uh, by Vince Liaguano and Rena Mason. It's a horror writers association anthology and we have stories from Tanana Reeve Du, Jennifer McMahone, S.A. Cosby, Stephen Graham Jones, Alma Katsu. It provides the ultimate reading experience for horror fans who want to examine fear of the other. So that sounds interesting. I think that this could really be a fun one. I'm loving horror this year, or at least really enjoying reading more of it this year. So yes. <laughs> okay, one book that is actually on my July TBR is The Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik. This is the third and final book in the Scholomance um, trilogy. The first book being A Deadly Education, I own the first book and the second book, have read the first book, loved it, but need to reread it in order to continue the series. And I wanted to finish the series this month. So I have the third book here so that I can do that. And then the last book that I found is one that I have not seen anywhere yet. And this is one of my most anticipated reads for this year, A Spell of Good Things by Aobami Adebayo, who wrote Stay With Me, which is, such a beautiful book and one of my absolute favorites. I'm very excited to read a new book by this author. I honestly don't even know what it's about, but I know that it's gonna be more literary fiction. Sometimes I am quite in the mood for that. I don't know if that is this month, <laughs> but I did pick this up. So hopefully I'll be in the mood for it at some point. So as you can see, I picked up quite a lot of books. <laughs> at the library and we're gonna see if we can add them into the July TBR and um, just, you know, I'm just gonna kind of mood re read my way <laughs> through the month of July. I think I mentioned that that's, that's my plan. Like my official TBR might go out the window and that's okay, that is okay. Even though I really should be focusing on the books that I own and uh, not library books, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so I just finished Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I'm gonna give it three stars, although I feel like that is uh, generous. But honestly, this wasn't bad. This wasn't bad. It was a cute romance. I liked the couple together. Um, I just wish that Allie Hazelwood would branch out from her tiny woman, tall, b huge dude. Uh, so huge, in fact, that you know, the poor main character has trouble taking him in. It was just... Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. You know, it works for her. It's her formula. I think this is just what we're gonna have to expect from her. I, I don't know that I necessarily will keep reading. Like, Love Theoretically came out this year, and I have it on hold from the library. I'm not gonna go out and buy it, but I will give it a read just to see if anything is a little different. I feel like the main character, the main male character was, you know, he had more of a personality than some of her other love interests, but also the same. Like, I feel like her characters are just very, all very similar. Even the, the quirkiness of the main female character, they're quirky in some way. You know what I mean? Maybe with slight differences here or there, but I just feel like you read one, you read them all. I was enjoying my time, but there were a lot of times where I was rolling my eyes, honestly. And the biggest eye roll happened at the end of the book. Something completely outrageous happens that makes it feel like this soap opera, like so unbelievably unrealistic. I was like, what is, like, it wouldn't have been weird if it was like a romantic suspense type novel, you know what I mean? But it, it just came out of, nowhere I feel. It was ridiculous. It was just, I, I wish I could say what it was, but I don't want to spoil things. But if you've read Love on the Brain and you know what I'm talking about, the whole, that whole thing just seemed so unrealistic and over the top and crazy that I don't understand how, why that was done. I don't understand why that was done. Um, 
but it was. I enjoyed that there really wasn't like this third act breakup, or at least it was a, it was a little different. It wasn't as significant as third act breakups tend to be. So I did appreciate that. But the whole thing at the end threw me off threw me off and honestly made me want to give this book a lower rating because I was like that was just too much it was too much but anyway I finished it three stars hi friends it is time to wrap up the vlog it's actually Monday I didn't update you at all yesterday because I got this burning urge to rearrange my living room furniture and so that's what I did yesterday and then rearranging said living room furniture kind of put my back out <laughs> so that was pretty much my day I, I'm, I just coming back from vacation I felt like I just the house needed I needed new surroundings I needed to switch things up and when I get an idea in my head I have to do it right away that's the kind of person I am so that that was yesterday but I did manage to finish a book I actually stayed up until like 3 a.m finishing this book because I didn't start reading until late but I finished Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Satanto and this was absolutely five stars you guys I loved this so much I told you guys how incredibly funny it is Vera is hilarious she is the Asian auntie that you want in your life that you need in your life the way that she just inserts herself into the investigation basically making up the whole investigation herself because the police had decided that it was probably accidental but she's like no he was murdered <laughs> i expected this to just be a fun silly over the top good time and that's what it absolutely was but also i did not expect for it to have such depth of feeling and it did and i sobbed last night finishing this book I couldn't believe how emotionally invested I became. I had no idea that this was gonna be like this found family, beautiful story. Vera gathers up all of her suspects, but the way that she like inserts into their lives, everyone who makes contact with Vera, their lives come out better in the end. It was beautiful, the things that she did for these people and the love and family that was developed between all of them. There's even a little bit of a romance, which was really nice. Vera is such an interesting character because she is, yes, yeah, she is a meddling old lady, but she's so much more than that. And deep down, she's just so lonely. <laughs> and it was heartbreaking to see that loneliness and to see how disregarded she felt. And this is something that I think about a lot because I am a mother <laughs> and at some point in my life, my kids are gonna go live their own lives. And because I'm the kind of mother who has invested so much of my life into my kids and raising my kids, I wonder what it's gonna be like when I no longer have that. Like this whole year really has really been about me figuring out how to live for myself and figuring out who I am again. And there's something about the loneliness that Vera experienced now that after raising her kid and she's losing her husband and just being alone in this tea shop that is really not bringing in any customers, that it's more expensive to keep running than it is, than she's making a profit. It, it, I just felt so deeply for her and <clears throat> it really made me think. And like we all experience loneliness at some points at some point in our life, uh, throughout our life, in all of our different stages. I think that that loneliness was so beautifully portrayed in here with Vera, but then also getting to see her create this family of people who absolutely care about her because she changed their lives so much for the better was just so incredibly beautiful and heartwarming. So yeah, I didn't expect to have the emotional reaction and to have this be that kind of story, but it was. It was both silly and ridiculous and over the top and incredibly heartwarming. I loved it so much. Five out of five stars. This might actually be one of my favorites, one of my new favorites of, of the year, honestly. It was that good. So I finished that. Once I got to a certain point, I couldn't stop reading. I will say, like, just for a little bit of criticism, I did guess who the culprit was. Um, not early on, I would say, I don't know, maybe like halfway through, a little over halfway through I guessed and I kind of 
saw exactly how everything would play out and I was correct but that didn't detract from my love for it like this yes it's a mystery but I don't think you go into this for the mystery you go into this for the characters and for what it has to say about life about friendship about family just so we can wrap everything up neatly I read uh, The Little Mermaid Against the Tide by JL which I gave a three out of five stars I read What the Hex by Alexis Daria, which I gave 3 out of 5 stars. I read Son of a Beach by Mia Sosa, which I gave 3 out of 5 stars. I read Witchy Whiskers by Danielle Garrett, which I gave 3 out of 5 stars. <laughs> I read The Comeback by Lily Chu, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars, really enjoyed this one. Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood, which I gave 3 out of 5 stars. And then of course, Vera Wong, which was 5 out of 5 stars. No doubt that this was the favorite of this vlog. So yeah, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I really wish that I had gotten like more footage in while I was on vacation, but really I was just like being in the moment and really enjoying my vacation and didn't think to like pull out a camera everywhere. So that's gonna be it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, talk to me down in the comments, let me know your thoughts. If you uh, wanna leave an emoji, leave me a duck emoji. Specifically, there's an interesting thing in here with with birds uh, so yeah duck emoji or any kind of bird emoji but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one bye